Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 279. End of March coming at you. Uh, this meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Otherwise, welcome to all of you in the uh, chat. We appreciate it. Welcome for saying, thank you for saying hi already. If you're still there and hanging out, feel free to say hi. Uh, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about the security fixes for all the supported Wix versions out there. Uh, that was fun. We'll talk about it. Uh, Wix 5 RC2 and the rest of the Wix 5 plan. And then we'll do our usual issue triage and questions and comments. So uh, I don't think this is going to be a surprise to anybody, especially if you saw my meeting agenda come out yesterday. Uh, but these are the things that have been going on. Since we have a few things to talk about, we'll go ahead and roll straight into them. Security fixes. There were two released on Friday. Oh, I forgot to put the date on here. Anyway, they came out Friday, March 22nd. Um, one is a directory junction recursion vulnerability, and the other thing is an elevated bundle temporary directory invulnerability. The first one affects you if you use remove folders EX to a remove a folder that could be in a user writable location. Anyway, the Fire Giant blog does more uh, provides more detail about how to uh, uh, about what it is, and if you're using remove folders EX, probably the best thing to do is just to upgrade. Um, the second one is if you're using burn. This one's a little bit more disappointing. We messed up. We we missed a case. I went back kind of digging to how we got into the situation and I can see how we got there, but we missed this case. Um, so there is a way of attacking the the BA um, from an unavailable process to get elevated if your bundle's already launched elevated. Uh, Wix 4 was actually protected against this on modern operating systems, I think. Oh, did it not get Win 10? I forgot Win 10 yep. had the fix. Uh, we think not, but it was still vulnerable if you were running elevated, but not as system. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, you should get this fix. If you're, if a user ever launches your bundle elevated, you could get in this situation. Anyway, so it's a, this one was a real bummer, but uh, so we we took care of it. Fortunately, these were both were reported properly, as in they were sent us privately so that we could fix them. Um, without having to run around like our hair is on fire, like the previous one that we had at the beginning of the year. Uh, why are there three this year? I don't know. It just kind of happens. I think this third one, the burn one, happened because someone poked it and went, hey, what if I poke it like this because of the first one we did um, in a little bit more of a hurry? And I think that one came out. Uh, otherwise, I don't know why they've all hit us now. It's kind of weird. It happens similarly with 3.11 and 3.11.2, like, or three, I mean, it's just like, they come in bunches. It's really annoying, but it is what it is. We fixed them. Uh, there, we have released another fix in three and we fixed four and we got the fix in the five RC2. So <clears throat> if you're using these things, you should definitely upgrade. Uh, you should upgrade, it's better um, to have all the security fixes um, in general. And yeah, so if you're wondering what the heck's been going on, this has been a lot of it and getting all this put together and handled properly and cleanly and reported and sent out to everybody and pushed to all these different locations. We've been spending a good bit of time running around doing security fixes. Important work, but not fun. It, it's, it's a mixture of frustration and disappointment um, all wrapped together and having to just get it solved for everybody, so. Uh, yeah, Zach, it's kind of that increased intention from one area can sometimes get people to poke again. Or sometimes it causes, it triggers things in people, like not triggers, as it like triggers ideas like, oh, that sounds like this. Does that work too? And so they bring their experience to bear and they help us by reporting these. I mean, we appreciate it. Again, I really much appreciate that they were reported properly. Uh, the last one we did was not reported properly and that caused us to have to really rush and get that one out faster, which is just a lot more stressful and really not much fun. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of the state of those things. The Fire Giant blog has more detail about it and all that good stuff. So, let's talk about something, something a little bit. Oh, so Zach brings up the question: What's the support timeline for three for Wix greater than three? Oh, uh, we're gonna decide that probably at five. It's a fantastic question. We're still kind of noodling on it, but we're probably going to get to five and take a breather and do that. There hasn't been, there hasn't been a lot of time to think right now. So we're not doing things that uh, deserve lots of thinking. These have been very tactical and focused and narrow 
precision work to do a change that doesn't break everybody, but fixes the, the security vulnerability, um, <laughs> which is very, very hard work to do, um, especially when you go back into a code base that was designed 15 years ago, um, 10, 15 years ago, uh, which is the challenge that we're having with Wix 3, uh, which is why we need it to go away. So we will sit and think about those things, uh, Zach, uh, the question is not lost. It just has not been decided. Um, but it will be once we take a breather when five is out, which will be like, even this week, we're like breathing a little better. All right. Because last week, RC2 came out as well. Um, Wix 5 RC2 also released March 22nd, 2024. I should have had that line for security releases. They were released on March 22nd, 2024. Um, there's only been a few days, but no new five bugs have been reported, so that's good, but it's only been a few days. And there were only a couple bugs fixed in RC2, um, and all of them were in areas that we touched in V5. So they were like, oh, that's a new thing. Oh yeah, a slight issue in that, and it was a straightforward fix. And RC2 has all those fixes. So, so far, things look great. Uh, try Wix 5 out, again. Um, again, no co code conversion should be necessary. Custom is working on the documentation the security fixes have been taking a lot of attention. Need to go to the documentation. And also heatwave support is coming for V5 is coming very soon. We're working on that as well. Uh, lots of things going on. So anyway, Wix 5 RC2 is available. Looking forward. Hey, look, I found emojis that were like green check marks. I thought those were cool. Um, we've done those two and we're going towards five. Uh, we have a couple weeks before uh, that and we will watch in these next uh, 12, 13 days, whatever, 15 days, um, as we march our way down there. Again, we feel really good about the release so far because of generally all the spaces that were covered with the tests. And when we don't, when we find a bug, we add another test. We're like, oh yeah, test was missing. We add it and we keep going. So things are pretty good of, um, pretty far going. So that'll be that. What percentage of people use Wix XC versus Heatwave? I don't, no, uh, we don't track that. Although we've talked about telemetry, we don't really track that. You can use MS Build now. That works uh, now. We have, I forgot what it was. Bob, do you remember it was like 800 plus across the two, 900 to six, something like that. 700 across the two releases of all the Wix 5 RC1 oh. downloads or something like that. Um, I forgot. Yeah, we, I don't recall. We've been cleaning up the, the new Git at, out of an abundance of caution to remove the old releases that are vulnerable so that people don't go, oh, well, I'll just pick that one. I don't know if that's the right thing to do on new Git, but it feels like the right thing to do. So that's what we've been doing. It just makes it a little bit harder to go see the stats. But I mean, we have like, you know, uh, it's got to be getting close to, you know, probably a thousand people have tried all this stuff out by now. So um, that's pretty good. Um, given the pre the pre-releases that... We always struggle to get people trying to pick them up. I think a lot of it also helped that people didn't have versions on their um, <laughs> Wix up, Wix.xe.net tool things. So uh, that went straight through. <laughs> they, they got V5 upgrades when they weren't necessarily expecting. I think that helped um, a little bit as well. So uh, we will keep going because the next thing to talk about is issue triage. And in issue triage, we're going to see uh, all the things that have been up and nothing unique to five. So that's what I expect a flood of tests to occur when heat wave is released and I don't see any builds planned for that. Uh, I don't know that we're going to get anything new with all that releasing, but maybe we will and we'll see. Um, you can use MS build to build Wix five. Now heat wave doesn't automatically upgrade you to V five. So I don't know that it's going to do anything for people using MS build because you still have to manually update your project to switch to use a V5 pre-release. So people can do that now and try it. I don't think Heatwave is going to change that much. Triage. Bob, ready? OK. All right. So we have a few more issues to talk about today. We actually have a bunch of closed ones. Um, I think that's because like they were fixed or whatever in RC2 before we got a chance to talk about them. So we'll talk about them here. Also, I went cleaning some old um, things and as I clean them out, some old milestones, I've been trying to get rid of the old milestones, just 
I found three. These first three are from ancient history, and I just marked them triage to get them out of there. So here we go. Overwrite, no, not working for certificate element. I don't know if there's anything to, I, I don't have anything to do with these necessarily. I just want to toss it back in triage. Um, it was marked extensions. Oh yeah, Jacob said he'd look at this in 314. I don't think we have a Jacob today. Of course, we had Jacob last week, but not this week. Um, I was thinking he might be here. It might be like, yeah, um, we would do something that. Um, I think this just goes up for grabs. If anybody wants to pick it up, they still could. Right? Or do we want to leave it for next week in case Jacob shows up? I'm, I'm open to either option. I don't remember the 314 Jacob thing. I don't either. Connection. I don't but either, but you gave it to him, so I assumed I it did, was yeah. true. <laughs> we, we don't usually just randomly assign things to Jacob and say, here, you can have this. <laughs> well, maybe that was another week he wasn't here. <laughs> it could have been. Um, I'll, I'll ping him. And okay. See. All right. All right. We can leave it in triage, or we can. Uh, yeah, we should ping him at least and be like, "Hey, yeah. are, do you still plan to do this? If not, it'll go for up for grabs." Um, discrepancy between Wix variable documentation and behavior. Um, can't set an empty string. Right. Cannot be set to an empty string. Um, and that was marked as a documentation bug, and put three fourteen. It was a three fourteen milestone that was getting rid of. That's what it was. I don't really know what we would have said about this. And I don't know why you'd want to set a waste variable to an empty string because it doesn't do anything. It, well, that, it that, that the can be useful. That, really? But that can be useful. We actually use it, I think, in the NetFX extension um, as a way to mildly templatize the, um, the NuGet, or NuGet, the .NET redist package groups. Wait, so it can be an empty string? It can be. The documentation, at least oh. back then, said it cannot, but oh, that's see. incorrect. I see. Okay. Got it. Okay. Do we just toss up for grabs or somebody to go fix the documentation for if they want? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll okay. take it. Won't take that long to verify that problem. No. Uh, this one, I remember this one. This one was trickier because uh, there's a bug in the Ukrainian localization, but they attached two zips to this issue. And I'm like, uh, okay. Um, so I think this turns into like, if someone wants to kind of do the work to figure out how to put this into V6 at this point, we could look at that for a pull request. Do you have ideas about the rules of on CLA contribution like this? Uh, I don't, I guess it, I mean, not if they're just lying at it. It's like, it's, it's, it's not an issue if it's like these words were wrong. I just fixed the words in text, right? Like it doesn't change the meaning or anything like that. Um, those don't I, have I to, have have there's a threshold on CLA that you have to cross over. Basically. Sure, sure. So if it's just like these words are the wrong words here, are the correct words, and they're not like adding a book, then it's not a creative contribution is basically the way that works. I, I did not look at the diffs of these. I expect they're right. right. It's like some words and some sentences are wrong. I'm like, okay. Anyway, so I think it could go for grab. Someone to grab it and put it in. Someone honestly that can read Ukrainian would be great because that's not going to be me. That's the hard part. Right? Well, <laughs> sorry, did, did you actually want someone to do it? or Yeah, if someone could read Ukrainian, they could t start with this oh. and, and go for it. I'm suggesting that's like kind of wishing for Code Pixies to come and do the work. We could close it. I'm, I'm, suge I'm saying if you want these edits, we should take them and, you know, try Google Translate and hope for the best because we're not going to find... Okay, yeah, that's fine. Sure, I guess, yeah. I guess we do have machine translation. I wonder how good machine translation is at it taking not these sorts of things. Better. It has not gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think, so, but no. Yeah, it's like, yeah, okay. I'll, I already have it. I right. will put poke it, at it into... It. 
future. Uh, when B is future. the future? B future. B future. Got yeah. it. Right. I think those are the old ones. Yep. Those are the old ones. Now we're back to last week's issues from last week or so. Uh, 8043, the firewall profile had a problem. Um, and Bob, you fixed the column definition. Uh, right. Is this the, the validation tables wrong one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So validation was wrong. You fixed it. And now things are working better. Right? I Seems think. to be. All right. Cool. Uh, next thing, 8046. Auto major upgrade with overridable remove existing product scheduling. I see. Someone wants to override the location. If you use auto major upgrade, they want to move, remove existing products. Seems to be. Uh, you could just put a, a major upgrade helmet in and get this though, right? Uh, that is correct. Then it would be one line versus three lines. Because rescheduling requires three lines of XML. Um, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it adds a lot for that. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I mean, I, you know, I'm, it's a trivial change, but I don't. Oh, the, I see. The purpose is to, during the scheduling or remove existing products, allow it to be overridden. Yeah. I guess I could see it because that's like all the other actions by default. I could see that, I guess. I mean, because then it's at least consistent and less surprising when you can't override the action. Yeah. I guess. I, I, I could see that. All right. I could kind of see that. Okay. So it's a matter of making this virtual or something like that? Yep. Yeah. That's all okay. it takes. All right. Well, oh, are you going to do it? Okay. Sure. All right. Okay. Um, MSI decompile dash X lead everything in selected folder. That's interesting. Did not know it did that. Oh, there's a, there's a comment that explicitly calls out that it's going to nuke the folder. Because <laughs> otherwise, I guess cap. Decabbing doesn't like oh, that or something? Interesting. The cabs don't don't like having things in the way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. Someone could go and rechange the way that decompile works and, and make it work properly in this scenario. The properly here probably means to make sure that the directory is empty. Or fix the things that needed to not be empty. Yeah. I don't know. But sure. I I don't disagree. Yeah. Someone wants to go take a look at it. They can take a look at it. That's interesting. Um, uh, 8053, pending file rename operations after burn exit. All right, so this has gone back and forth a little bit that they're finding something being held in use at the end of, uh, is this in four? Yeah, four and five. Uh, a file's getting held in use more often than not. Although you said you didn't see it in RC2, Bob? I did not see it using Wix additional tools, which is a very simple That's bundle, Wix standard BA. to be fair. Yeah. And it is Wix standard BA, which is consistent with uh, what the reporter is seeing. All right. Cool. Well, cool. Someone could tackle that if they want. It's it's not, it doesn't mean that a reboot is required, though. This is just no, a, it's a clean post up. reboot cleanup. So yeah, it's a post reboot I cleanup thing. I mean, okay. Yeah, it'd be great if, you know, like, yeah, it should be a little cleaner. I agree. That'd be great if someone's tackle it. So I'm, it's not high priority on my list to go hunt down right now so but yeah and so it's maybe a timing i don't know who knows where it could be yeah if it's just with stand ba or other bas i don't know someone could dig into it if they wanted could be interesting might find something all right um column category on oh, this is the one i was waiting for 8056 column category unknown shouldn't mean null yeah this is i this is how i knew about the firewall thing i saw that column category unknown was used in the validation and i agree with bob that it it is strange that to set a validation table to null use column category unknown that's a very strange deep deep dark dark internal implementation detail is this me yeah that was me <laughs> that was like haha yeah, this is not the way it should be used. So anyway, I agree with this. 
Oh, wait, did you fix it? No, 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 no. this is related to that issue. Yeah. Okay, I was like, wait, this is fixed. That's how I found it. Right, because of that, you found this. All right. Um, yeah, cool. Small change. Well, I don't know how hard. It's not that hard to change. So it's not a bad one to get started with if you want to get into deeps of deep, deep part of Wix kind of thing. Um, but I don't think I'm going to get to it. It's up to you, Bob, if you want to take it. But otherwise, we can leave it for some other people. I will never see this issue again. So, <laughs> yep. Little thing that someone wanted to pick up. I'm like, yeah, okay, you can pick that up. 8059, INI file remove line doesn't create an entry with action equals two. Oh, this is like a uh, mapping was wrong inside Wix, right? Yep. Yeah, and it was a simple fix. So this actually came in four and it will be fixed in five. So minor bug fix in all of, from all the way from four, that will be fixed in five. Yay. I wonder if it goes back to three. Probably not. It does not. Okay. 8062, 311, 2 to 314, NetFX package group references are broken. The old ones are broken, right? Yeah, NetFX 40 client read, all those ancient ones. The SHA ones are gone, right? Yep. That was it. Yeah. This this yep. change happened as part of SHA 2. Yep. And none of those got updated. They're out of support. Yep. Way end of life. So they never got updated to SHA 2. Yep, and we didn't keep pointing at them because they didn't get updated. So yeah, these are dead. So yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. If you if you pick these up, if you need ancient NetFX 4.0 type stuff, then you'll have to go take it from an ancient build of Wix because Visual Studio isn't supporting you anymore. So yeah, yep, take it up with what Visual Studio we did, and they blew it all off because they didn't care. Eight oh six three. Installation scope with per user fails when package NetFX redis is used. Oh, this is weird. Okay. Package with per user that uses NetFX, which means it will have to elevate, run the build as and it fails to install. Oh, it doesn't elevate? Oh, Bob, you yeah. mentioned this. Yeah, so this is a change in behavior from three to four. Oh. Um, you used to be able to take a per user package and bundle it with the .NET Redist. And as long as you didn't need to install the Redist, you did not need to elevate. And you could install your per user bundle with you know, per user yeah, privileges. That's yeah. supposed to work. It, it does not is. anymore. It does not. That's um, not good. There was a bunch of work that Sean did around caching in V4. And this resulted in a change of behavior that more stuff is now um, now, more stuff now wants wants to be cached. Oh, and yeah. This is a problem because a per per machine package gets cached in a per machine location, which requires elevation. The bundle is per user and does not request elevation. So, I mean, there's a. It should have requested elevation whenever it figured out that it had to store something at per user location, and that's or a per machine location, and that. Yeah. So you have two bugs slash bad de bad design changes yeah um, you know it it should not require you to um it, sh it shouldn't cash if it's not needed yeah this Remember, is we the, went but this is that. this whole cash keep thing and stuff yeah. like that and it makes sense for some exes that you need to make sure that they're cached so you can uninstall them because the uninstall key ends up pointing to them in there um mm -hmm. and all that good stuff but done if framework is not one of those for example and so that's one thing and the second thing is, uh, yeah, you should be able to, for a per user package, elevate and cache your per machine prerequisites, essentially. So that's a bummer. It's a mix. Um, the good news is that it, you, you can't use, no, the bad news is you can't use the prepackaged package group, but if you take it and fiddle with the cache setting, you get the old behavior. Oh, so it's only the caching that's Correct. the problem. Still, mm -hmm. that needs to get fixed. That should that should still sure. yeah, work. Yeah. yeah, okay. So the workaround is unfortunate but possible. Mm -hmm. But this is, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we should fix this in the future. Yeah, uh, it, there's a workaround, so... And, and this is deep dark caching stuff. Oh, no, I yeah, this is not going to be so, a place to be in. Yeah, yeah. So this this 
should be fixed, but you know, there's a workaround. So, you know, it, right. it can take some, it, it can take the full amount of thought that's going to be required to figure out the right behavior. Yeah. If, if you want it, you can take it. If not, I'll take it in future and we'll go back and look at that. Uh, I'll take it for now. Okay. I, you have ideas for V6 and burn related stuff, and I do not, but that that's supposed to work, and that bothers me that it doesn't, so we'll fix it going but forward. You had such fun in burn and V5. No. No, I'm, I, am, I am not at all happy with that feature that I had to write. I take that back. I'm very happy that it's done. I am not happy that I had to write it. Uh, 8065, 314 introduces ICE validation error. Yeah, the Windows installer gave us bad ICEs and I didn't realize that they were in 314. We fixed it and then fixed it and then fixed it again in four. And in the end decided rather than try to get all those fixes in the 314 while also staring down a bunch of security fixes, we just went back to the non-broken cube from before ARM. So I think the end result is that ARM merge mod cube Merge mod cube in 3.14 doesn't understand ARM is the net result of all the mess of this. But anyway, so hopefully that's all, that should be all gone. And that is fixed in 3.14.1 um, since it was pretty bad that merge mod validation was hosed. So that's 8.065. So ARM64 merge modules are still hosed. For ICE validation. For validation. Clear, for, for validation. Only for validation, right? So ARM64 merge module probably has to skip validation because the MSI cube does not work. And it doesn't work in four either. We or some we have all these workarounds in it in four. Four? Yeah, four, not five. Four to handle the silly things that are going on inside their um custom inside their ISIS. So anyway. And it's still there in five. And it's still there in five, yes. 8068. Uh, someone says the ball condition hangs uh, when using an internal UI bootstrap application. That seems strange. Does it? I mean, I, I didn't get as deep into it as you did, but you know, the internal UI BA does not have any UI. So this is something that Wix standard BA handles. So I'm sitting there going, uh, but I also know that internal UI BA uses Wix standard BA in prereq mode, and then I started to short circuit, so I stopped yeah, thinking about yeah. it. This is there, there's this is all kinds of nasty in here. So yeah, like it, it's not correct. It shouldn't hang. <laughs> uh, no, no. So I mean, yeah, someone could fix it. It's it's. I learned in five how pretty crazy the internal UI Bootstrap application is. I was surprised that what I found, which is on me for not being closer to the implementation when it was being implemented in four, but I was, it was uh, fascinating the way it worked. Um, it's a little better in five. It's a little more streamlined, but I don't know that this is fixed in five. So um, yeah, it might still have that strange behavior. So yeah, but, but I agree it should not hang. Like that doesn't make sense. So yeah, someone could take yeah. this and decide, come up with a proposal on how to fix it. Um, 8069, unhandled firewall exception element. Oh, this one. Yeah, the, the firewall contains unhandled exception element. And they, they didn't show, they said they updated their, their package reference to 5.0, but then down here, they said they needed to install Wix globally, which is not, this has nothing to do with it. This is not the fix. They probably fixed their project file but this is not a complete project file, so I don't know. Um, but probably what they did was they did a build and they saw that this is spitting out a warning saying that their Wix 4 package project did not support this extension and they sorted it out from there. They didn't say that, but there is messages that tell you that this is not going to work, that specifically point that you've got the wrong Wix toolset version, um, Wix firewall, Wix extension version. That. that said, I do think there's more of the experience we need to work around um, Wix extensions and the error messages around them and stuff. We've got some of that, um, but haven't come up with anything concrete. It's one of those things I want to think about after five and get a little more feedback from people as they adopt it. Like, okay, we need to help guide people through the extensions a little bit more. I'm guessing we're going to get more feedback like that, but we'll see. Maybe I'll be wrong and everybody will be like, oh, no, no, it makes sense and it's all good. 
But based on early feedback, there's gonna be more here to do. Anyway, they solved this themselves probably because that warning message that they forgot to tell us was on the screen above this error message. Um. <laughs> well, it's the weird mix of MS Build and Wix.exe that is. This is wrong. Whatever they this 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 is wrong. Like I I I don't. This has nothing to do with this sure. yeah, this project. So I. They're, they're not coming at us with a whole lot of data, so I decided not to follow up on it. Anyway, my point is everything works correctly, properly, and there are messages that actually guide you through this experience. There's actually more messages to guide you through than there are when using the command line XC, which might be the place that we need to spend more time actually is getting a few more messages when that. The MS build experience actually is better. It tells you when you have a version that's not supported. So anyway, I'm curious to see what feedback is on this experience, and I expect we're gonna to need to do some work to guide people through it better, essentially is what it comes down to. Anyway, uh, not a bug. Um, last one, 8072, MSI decoupal results in trim source pass for file. I don't think that's right. I think this is just the ID that it is in the cab. Yeah, because it's the file ID. So the file is extracted as the file cab so that you could turn around and compress it back in. It does not use the name of the file because you could end up with two files the same name. Um, yeah, because that's not the correct name of the file either. It's the wrong casing. So. Yeah, no, it definitely defaults to the, to the ID. Correct. So Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is the way it works. Uh, if you wanted to change it, then you'd have to extract it out of the cab with this name too, and then you'd have to know deal with if there were ever any collu collisions or anything like that. Anyway, it's just it's harder to do that. What what the decompiler does now is simple, so and, guaranteed to work, and guaranteed to work. And this name would be very different if their ID didn't happen to match the name of the XE. Yeah, look here. They expect this to have the ID to have XE on it when clearly it didn't. So yeah, no, this is it's just not the way it works. So if you wanted that, you should have had this as your file ID in the MSI to begin with. That's just not how the decompiler works. So anyway, yeah, nope, that's not how it works. The decompiler is not intended to give you out and say, oh, here's your X's and DLLs. That's not how it, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't try to do that at all. It tries to then that you could decompile it, have your source code, and then compile that again without too much effort maybe zero effort um, for them. So yeah, that's not a bug. That's not how the decompiler works. Um, if they want to create a feature, changing it, I guess, but I don't know why that would be really strange. I think they're trying to use the decompiler to take apart MSI and get back, like they're trying to get an admin image out of MSI decompile, which is not what it does. Whew. So anyway, as we go through all this, as you can see, none of those issues uh, sorry, only two of those issues? No, one of those issues was none of those issues? None of these issues in here were, no, the one, the firewall pro profile regression, 8043, was like the V5 bug <laughs> since last triage. And it was a validation thing. So again, behavior seems to be looking pretty good as far as the bugs coming in on all the different things on V5. So that feels good. Let's go back and we'll talk about questions, comments, other things people want to talk about. Um, oh, Sudhir, welcome. Welcome to chat, welcome to the meeting. Uh, I've been staring here at the issues list, feeling actually pretty good about them, especially since none of them like were specific to five. It's like they're, the people are using five and found them in four as well. I'm like, yeah, this is good. Like, And some people even tried, found them in four, tried in five as well, and found that it's still reproduced there. And that's pretty cool too, that people would try five before opening the bug. That's pretty good too. I, I do appreciate that as well. Um, anything else? I, it's, it's, I'm still kind of decompressing from all the security and RC2 and all those other releases in the last, uh, honestly, last three weeks, four weeks have been a lot of that kind of stuff. Because we had one security vulnerability fixed just before all that, too. So it's been busy. All right. So we're going to see how the rest of this week goes. 
Um, and into this week and then next week, uh, Jesus, a new dojo session. I'm thinking about Jesus. I'm the uh, random digression on dojo. Like I'm watching some things. Um, I'm almost to 500 subscribers and 500 subscribers is interesting because you get like an extra moderation tool in YouTube, which is kind of exciting. Uh, so I was like, yeah, if I hit 500 subscribers, maybe I should do that, which of course won't help here because probably those of you that are gonna subscribe to Dojo already are subscribed to Dojo, so you guys can't help that count, which means it's gonna grow naturally as the people find it interesting. Um, but I am thinking about uh, what would be in the next Dojo um, season, and I am thinking about it. So uh, it'll come, because I, I enjoy doing that, especially now that I have uh, a better mindset for approaching season two, I'm looking forward to that. So it'll be, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, does Wix Cup warn on old package references? No, Wix Cup doesn't deal with project files, so it doesn't do anything there. Um, are there any plans to host historical v4 docs separate from v5? Uh, we have, the v5 docs have been updated. The XSDs were updated uh, for v5, and we've been marking things that are v5 with a little Wix v5 marker. There aren't many, uh, so they're, they're, it's, easier to just mark them than it is to host them completely separate from the v4 docs. And there's a couple things now that are like v4 only uh, that are deprecated around the uh, Bootstrapper applications. Um, though there's a couple things that are going away that are now marked v4 only. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that the uh, that makes things better. Um, I was looking at files element and didn't see anything saying it was valid in four. Uh, okay, maybe we missed that. We'll go double check that. The attributes and things around have V5 on them. We'll make sure that Wix, the files element has V5 on it. It's marked as V5 as well. Uh, the text for directory adder looks copy pasted poorly. Okay, we could look at that. Yeah, that's a, it's a good idea. Bob points out opening a bug is a good idea. Burn package refs, not MS build package refs. Burn package refs? Burn package refs. I don't know burn pack. Package refs are an MS build. What's a burn package ref? I don't. I don't understand. Package group ref. What? Package group ref. Package group ref. Oh, no, those are ain't. That's three. Yeah, no, that's ancient. I mean, no. I don't think we've ever suggested people should run. Wix cop or anything other than formatting when you're not changing versions. Yeah. Package group ref. I, I, gosh, that was really strange. I had it in my head, a package reference in MS, but I've been spending too much time in MS build today already. Um, yeah, package group ref. No, there's nothing. No, and we're not going to go back for three. Yeah, it, yeah. We, we talked about that a lot back when we did it. It was, it was a breaking change. We talked to Microsoft about it going, you guys are blowing the whole world up with this whole SHA-2 thing. And they were like, meh, don't care. So we just ended up in a space where like, well, they're deprecating the world. We're just gonna get kind of sliced off here on this edge. So yeah, it's, it's a regression. It was a, it was a thing that they chose to do and we got carried along with it. So yeah, that's a thing. People will hit it and they'll find, oh, I'm referencing .NET 4. That's ancient. That's been out of service for a long time. I will move to .NET 4, 7, 1 or 2, whatever one's in service. Sorry. Yeah, if you, you know, got to keep up. You got to keep up. That's, I mean, I mean, that's... You also remember 3.14 was never intended to be the, you know, a compatible release like all the other threes. Yeah, I it mean, was always uh, intended to be a breaking change in prep for moving to four. Yeah, so, so. I mean, it's just it's the way it went, and the whole pick up. We had choices to pick, and that one got picked up. But yeah, you, yep, that's the advantage of it being out there. That, but now there's an issue. Thank you for opening the issue. Now people will find it faster. Be like, oh yeah, this is a known thing. The ancient ones were broken. Other questions, other things going on? Thought framework four 
eight was the latest. Yeah, so four eight is the latest. This is something I keep having to look back at because we have some customers that are that are tracking old, and I think four six two is still in service on extended operating systems. Um, and four seven is it's not, is it four six two? I think it's four, four six two four seven one four seven one is still out there on some ancient things as the low ends but generally if you have anybody that's not like an extended servicing then they probably already have four seven two four eight or even four eight one everywhere now four eight one should be the most popular that should have been pushed down by windows update you just hit these edge cases where if you want to stay on the old 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 um stuff for extended service yeah and we we get them in the air gap kind of people that are on really old machines that are paying for the extended service or whatever you can find 462 as a thing still out there which is why we still target 462 for some of our assemblies um even though it's a pain in the butt to target 462 as a target framework um and it would be nice if we could target 472 everywhere and i don't remember what did we make that change in five I i know we talked about standardizing 472 and five but I don't think we did. I don't think so. We will eventually standardize on 472, I think, because that's, although maybe it'll be 4.8 by that time. I don't know. We have to figure It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. And I don't have the dates memorized. I always have to go back to the lifecycle pages of Microsoft lifecycle pages, pull out all the dates, and then they have to cross reference them, say, well, this is built into Windows 10, and this Windows 10 is an L- a long term servicing thing, so you can still get support for it for a long time. And you just have to chase like the whole thread down until you find the answer for what is the lowest thing that someone can be running that is still supported by Microsoft. AKA getting security updates. And that ends up a lot of times being our lowest bar because we want to try to meet people there. All right. So that's the that's the challenge. It's it's a challenge. <laughs> and yeah, and they don't make it easy. And when they did that whole SHA 2 thing, the .NET team, .NET framework team did a very unusual thing where they just like, yeah, we're nuking all these things and they just broke every everything. And we had to do an emergency fix up to handle that. So that was that was amusing. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> so anyway, the the long tail of backwards compatibility and absorbing other people's dependencies, as we do, because we touch everything in Windows potentially, including firewall, which had all its funky little behaviors that we've just picked up now too. So anyway. Pick a thing. We're running around in circles with it. All right. So the question I had was, should we put another meeting next week? Should we put one on the 2nd of April? Why not? You want to add a meeting? No. I wouldn't object if you wanted one, but... I just wonder if we should check in on the last little bit. We should do it. Maybe it'll be a short meeting. Maybe it'll be a short meeting. Yeah. Christopher, you're, you're absolutely right. 314 being kind of the, the bug fixes, making the bug fixes in Wix 3 is a massive challenge for us. And the, we navigated a whole bunch of different options of what do we pick? And in the end, we kind of picked the lesser of two evils, and we went with 314. And so far, there's been a couple small things, and then the, you know, like the ARM, the merge module thing, we got that fixed. And then the Microsoft cut these things. You can put them back. They were there. You could still go put them back. Given all the other options we could have done, it would have been a bigger deal. Honestly, I'd forgotten about those changes. So yeah, we didn't call it out when it came out because we were focused on the security fix, which is the hardest thing to narrowly put through here. So there you go. It's out there. It's open source. You guys can use it however you want. Um, How Azure GitHub chooses to update their things, you know, they don't talk to us when they do that. They just update them. So uh, it's like, okay, whatever. Want to know about 314? the what you want to know about 314 is you should get off of it. You should be moving away from 314 and onto a better version of Wix. That's our statement right now. And that's what you should be doing because 
we're barely doing we're doing security fixes but only for a little while longer next time chances are the next security fix doesn't hit a supported wix version and it's still wix 3 that has problems because wix 3 has such a it's from targets the windows xp sdk windows sdk which just has this wider space and fewer apis accessible to it which means that it's always going to be more vulnerable than the ones that we build against the Windows 7 SDKs or eventually, hopefully, the Windows 11 SDKs because even Windows 10 is dead. Um, so, like... Actually, we're already doing that. I, I, I know. We're already on our path down that way because we supporting these ancient, ancient things in a design from 2008 or six or whatever it was. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just... The answer is move away from it. Like that's the answer. And yeah, you hit a bug fix. Sorry that it's an ancient thing. We need to move forward. So how you, yeah, we can't, I can't go back and fix all those things. What we have to do is be responsive so that the people that are being responsible can do the right thing. And we go and do the fixes. So, and we provide the fixes so that everybody downstream can be like, all right, I can absorb those fixes and everything. And we've had a lot of people talk to us about all the different implications of this and it's big and it's important. So we're doing the right thing on that front. And I don't have a lot of, um, I don't have a lot of patience anymore because we need to get off of three and it's going away. And so the answer is not to go spend a whole lot of time thinking about three. The answer is, you know what? One more hint. You should be moving away from three. You need to be moving away from three. So that's that's the higher order bit of all of this. So there we go. Is the XSD manually maintained? Yes, there's no generation of the XSDs. Um, although every time I go in and touch them, I'm, I'm, I think about changing that. <laughs> but I don't, I have not spent the time in that. Um, the XSDs and how they're used is actually a thing that I'm going to be looking at probably in Wix 6. Um, tell Microsoft to remove Wix 3 from the image would help your cause. Well, I, they're going to remove, I, I, I'm I guessing they will remove it from the image when it goes out of service. I don't, I don't, I don't actually know what they're going to do. It's in service. I'm not like break everybody when it, Technically, we said we're going to give them another six, nine, whatever the number is, eight and a half months that we'll, we'll continue to fix bugs. You get that window, people should start moving. I think this might be a nice way people kind of go, oh, geez, I really need to think about it. Because admittedly, we had a whole lot of things happen during four and people got comfortable with the idea that Wix 3 is safe and never changes. And I don't have to think about this at all, which was never the case. But... We didn't have any data points to point them in a different direction. Now people are suddenly getting data points going, oh, Wix 3 is old. There are now going to be in a week and a half, two weeks, two versions of Wix that they need to move to. And we're actively trying to improve the space, not repeating the patterns that we have of the past from V2 to V3 to V4. So yeah, people are just kind of getting a wake up being like, oh, I actually have to pay attention to this now. I guess I should go do that. And so that's going to happen. You know, just ignoring all your dependencies, I, I don't have a lot of sympathy for. We talk to, as Fire Giant, we have direct communications with our customers. We tell them about things so that they know that they're happening so that they're less likely to be caught by surprise, right? We have direct relationships with all of them. With the millions of people out there, it's it's too hard, too many permutations, and we don't, we don't try to keep up with that. So... Um, that's a difference, right? It's an open source project. You have to keep track of it yourself. Not my problem. Um, if you're a customer, completely different, completely different relationship. And anyway, like I was saying, Wix 6 XSDs is a place that I want to experiment with and see if it can make that a little bit of space. It's starting to become a limiting factor in what we can do with the language and what we're trying to do with backwards compatibility and stuff like that. So it's a place I want to try to um, improve. Um, that I'm gonna kind of poke at. You get a warning, right, Bob? I think I saw the warning. Yep. I think it happened to me. Yeah. It's a warning. Someone mentioned that. Yeah, we learned that from. With so, so you know, in in Fire Giant, we have an advanced harvesting that we, 
and we brought some of that knowledge and put it in files so people could just have that because we want to get rid of heat because heat's a nasty block of code to maintain. Um, so we brought the important parts in the files element. And that was one of the things we learned is when it matched nothing, you need to say something because so, probably they got the path wrong. It helps a lot. But it's just a warning because maybe you meant to do that. It's kind of weird, but that's why it's a warning. All right, so next week then we're going to do a check-in. I'm not even sure it's going to turn into a real, like a full-blown Wix meeting. Um, or should we do it? No, let, let, we'll keep it on Tuesday. I was going to say we could try to do it Thursday. We could do it Thursday, I think, as I say that without even looking at my schedule. Um, That's not, 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 not the right thing to do. No, I'm, I'm going to bring it up right over here in a second. Not this week, next week. Um, yeah, we could do next Thursday if we want to like a last minute ripcord kind of meeting. Or we could do it Tuesday. I mean, yeah, Tuesday's safe. It's already in everybody's kind of spaces. Certainly in my head. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll do it next week and just kind of like a check in and go like, because, you know, it's always possible someone shows up is like, oh, hey, this whole thing right through, you know, I don't know, files or burn or something just doesn't work. And we're like, okay, well, we can't ship with that bug. Uh, and it will take us too long to fix it or too long to verify it or, you know, we just don't have confidence in it. That bug could sh could show up at any time, but we haven't seen anything like that. A non-binding estimate for what soon it's... Uh, as soon as we can get it to... Con so binding estimate, what soon is for Heatwave. As soon as we get it such that we have a confidence in its quality that we can we can put it out. Like that's what we're... We want to make sure that... We don't just drop something and people are like, oh, this just broke all my four stuff too. Like we have to make sure that it does the right thing there. It's not an open source project. We don't just throw it over the wall and it's, it has a different attitude before then. Before, uh, it should be before 5GA. If it's not, then something really strange happened. Surprising. That would be very strange. Does something strange happened? No, that's pretty normal for us. <laughs> you know, security fixes are never planned, um, which is part of the problem. All right. So April 2nd, I think, is the next meeting. April 2nd. Um, a week from today, same time. That's 930 Pacific. And we'll do essentially this again. Uh, we won't hopefully be talking about any security releases actually. So I take, hopefully we'll do this, but less. Yeah, this, but less, right, Bob? Less. No security, no issues to triage. That would be great. Uh, that might be hoping for too much because we keep getting stuff from four and three and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but we will be there and, be, and see how everything looks. I guess I'm just kind of looking at it going, yeah, I think that'll be it. So hopefully we can show up next week and have a very short meeting. Just like, Hey, nothing has happened. Everything is great. Sorry. No bugs have been reported. Everything seems to be looking good. The V5 numbers keep going up uh, like they have been for the last uh, week and two weeks and all that kind of good stuff. So I guess what we're shooting for. So on that note, make sure I scan back and I didn't skip over anybody's questions. I think we got that. Yeah, I think I answered all that and all that and all that. All right, V5 coming soon. We'll have another meeting before the actual RTM date. So we'll talk about the excitement part of that um, then. And we'll hopefully be less, a little farther away from all, all the craziness of these security releases that we'll feel a little bit more excited about um, V5 than the energy I can get right now for it. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, I just want to be so done right now. So anyway, we'll be back in one week. That's unusual, but we will be back in one week, April 2nd, and we will do the same meeting, same format. See all of you again, and we will be talking about the shipping, hopefully, RTM of V5 at the end of the following week. All right, see you guys all on April 2nd. Later. Bye.